Hey guys, today I wanted to give you an update on the laser cutter build. Uh, I've got a lot of the framework done, in fact most of it. Uh, you can see that I had gotten legs on it and used a piece of wood to add a shelf and to stabilize it a bit. Then I cut a piece of aluminum from an old tool chest and bolted it across the back for some extra stability on here. It's not as stable as I'd like, but it'll, it'll hold. At the moment, um, I'm using this aluminum plate for the bed, for the cutting bed. I've still got to cut grooves into it or put holes in it uh, to make it more of a grate so smoke can pass through. Uh, but at the moment, this is going to be the size of the cutting bed. This was actually the table that was on the large 3D printer. I had chopped a big chunk of it off and set it in here. And the other chunk is down here. This is going to be what holds various components like power supplies and whatnot. And then up here will hold Arduinos and some relays and uh, some power converters. And the screens will be mounted here as well as any buttons and everything else that's needed. I still have to add another plate over here. But beyond that, I, I've, the only thing I really have left to do is to add a big piece of steel to the whole bottom, just a piece of sheet steel. Once I can get that done, it is time for me to start wiring everything up, getting all the stepper motors wired up so I can finally get this thing start moving. Now one thing I'm going to wait on is this. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm the next thing I need to order is the optics. It's to give me the mirrors, the cutting head, the lens, and whatnot. I'm also going to get the mounts for the laser at the same time of the optics so I can kind of get everything set up to where it needs to be. Now the belts on this middle gantry uh, will flip around these little grooves and then they crimp on. So once I attach the belt to this, it's going to be really hard to take this off to attach the cutting head and whatnot. So the belt on this is going to be one of the last things that I end up actually putting on, or at least until I can get the optics. I had ordered a water pump. And then this thing came in, and I didn't realize how small it was when I ordered it. I've got a couple of other things that this will work in that currently have larger pumps in them. So probably what I'm going to do is go swap this out with one of them and uh, use the bigger pump instead of this. I've got most of the programming on the second Arduino done. The last thing I need to do really is get this flow meter set up so it cuts off the laser via relay once if or if the flow rate, the water flow stops, or if it becomes too slow. Some of the one of the last big parts I have left to do on here, uh, framing-wise, is the door. There's going to be a door that goes through this big opening here that I could just lift up, place my material in to have cut, and then put it back down. Now I'm doing my best to use scrap parts as much as possible. Um, like I said in the first video, most of these rails, or a good chunk of them, came from the 3D printer, as well as this big sheet of aluminum, the table, and this piece here. This sheet of aluminum came from uh, the DIY spectrometer I had made a video about a while ago. Uh, this is the piece of aluminum that I used to make that with. Um, the diamond plate aluminum down there in the back, that was, like I said, off of an old tool chest. I, on that one, I had used the lid of the tool chest on another video of making a gold sluice. And all of these L brackets that you see holding these plates uh, down here and on the other side, those all came from an old chameleon cage that I had built a long time ago. That's why you see all these extra holes, because they were used elsewhere. All these plates, like this one, this one and even the table none of these are bolted down yet uh, because like i said in the table i still have to cut grooves and i still have to cut all the holes for mounting everything like up here for the adrenos and relays i still have to cut all the holes for the or drill all the holes i mean for the power supply for the water cooling and all of that now these are the adrenos that i'm going to be using on the front of the laser cutter uh, this is the ramps kit and the screen that goes with it. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up so you can see what this build looks like. It's a 
takes a second to boot up. Okay, and here is the main screen for this build. You can go through and set everything up like you could before when it was a 3D printer. Um, the performance on it isn't as well as I would like. It's kind of non-responsive sometimes. But it has everything in there that you would think you would need. So let's go ahead and fire up this other Arduino. Now, I don't have all the sensors hooked up to this at the moment. Um, while I have it programmed in, they're just not all hooked up. I got one temperature sensor working on it at the moment. Um, let's see if we can get that to focus. Come on. There we go. Okay. So you can see it gives you the water temperature going into the laser and coming out of the laser. Uh, that's just so you can tell pretty much how well your cooling is working. Uh, just to keep a better eye on things. You can also see that there's a flow gives you in liters per minute. Um, I still have to hook up and program that flow meter. Um, I might end up changing that to milliliters per second or, or well, I'm not sure yet. Uh, then you have Peltier status. Uh, I am adding a Peltier cooler to the system uh, with a water block on it to help chill the water as it goes into the laser. Uh, and that can be activated with a separate button um, and that'll give you the status of it. That's also another reason why I wanted to include the water temp in and out. There's probably going to be a few more things I add to this, so this layout may not be the same by the time I put it into the laser cutter. Now, one thing I haven't really gotten done uh, is any changes to this build of Marlin. Uh, and the reason for that is because I wanted to make sure that this is actually going to work before I start making changes within the code. Uh, once I get everything wired up and I'm positive that this is going to work like I think it should, then I'll go through and start getting some things fixed in there. If you go through the menus, there are still some options in there for 3D printing, such as extruder and, and, and whatnot. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.